Good morning. I'm Keith Glass, City of Monroe Police uh, Department, and I got Lieutenant Tracy Hanson with me today. And what we want to do is point out a, a problem that's uh, not only uh, citywide, but it's probably a nationwide, statewide, and countywide problem, and that's just litter. And while this is not the most devastating uh, crime that uh, we deal with in the city of Monroe, as you can see from the video, it's, it's a lot of trash. And, and we're standing right here at the uh, East Spring Street exit uh, coming off 78 Highway. And this litter was picked up uh, about 10 or 12 days ago. And what I want to exp express to you is, is this is your community. If you see somebody littering, uh, go ahead and call the uh, 911, give them a tag number, uh, and officers inside the city will res respond to that. Uh, if you can't uh, call 911 for some reason, uh, if you can take down a tag number, Lieutenant Tracy Hanson is going to kind of be heading up something for me on this litter for a while, and I'd ask that you just email her the uh, tag number. Her email is thanson at MonroeGA.gov. That's T. Hanson at MonroeGA.gov. And again, it's your community, and you, as you can see, uh, and he'll scan around and show you some more trash, but uh, this trash was picked up with uh, community service by community service workers about 12 days ago. And you can see how much is built up. So we really need your assistance, and uh, we're looking at some ways also of uh, uh, places where we have a lot of this maybe getting some uh, uh, video uh, out there so we can catch them also on video but we just need your help with that and if you have any other problems with the uh, crime or whatever in the city of Monroe that uh, we can help you with please contact us at the city of Monroe Police Department. And I just we'll look forward to hearing from from citizens here in the community and we can work together and hopefully make Monroe not only a safer place but more appealing to the eye and just like chief said just email me with any problems um, if you see anyone littering or if you can get a tag number and we can follow up with those people just email me t hansen at monroega.gov and we thank you for your help Where do you come alive? A stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org, a free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia County, all in one easy to use site. When you move more, you live more. WalkGeorgia.org It's your home, it's your dream. Great on testing, keep it healthy and clean. Make it green, green, green. Making it green is making sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Make sure you test your home for the presence of radon. It's easy. To learn more, call 866-730-GREEN. Preserve your family's health and well-being. Get your home tested. Now that's living healthy and green. Green, green, green. It's your home, it's your dream. Radon test and keep it healthy and clean. Make it green, green, green. To learn more, call 866-730-GREEN. This is interesting. If you want to race your lawnmower, you can do it at McDonough. 
Here's some of their erasers. Mitsubishi Mirage gets 40 miles to the gallon. It's a cute little car.
this is a Subaru line with all their different models. This is an Alfa Romero, beautiful car, sports car. Um, I think for ICM, we are going This is a 2009 Dodge Viper. Charles Sanders, if you're looking, this is a 1956 Porsche Speedster in very good condition. This is Captain Herb Emery's 1962 Ford 500 Galaxy. Reminds you of the one in Mayberry. I just love Captain Herb's license plate. Here are the Mini Coopers. Didn't realize they were that expensive, but this particular one is 52,700, and then the convertible over there is 53,000. So um, kind of a pricey little car. These are the Volkswagen. This is the Golf wagon, which is a nice size, smaller wagon. Starts at about 24,000. Goes up. Of course, the Volkswagen Beetle. It is uh, improved with a uh, large trunk. It has a huge trunk for a small car. We get about 25 miles to the gallon. This is the Golf TDI, which is a diesel, and it gets up to 45 miles to the gallon. Oh, those diesels, they can really get the mileage. Nice looking car. This is the Volkswagen Jedi TDI diesel. Um, it gets up to 45 on the road. Average is uh, 36. It's a very nice sized car. You can see by the bicycle on top. Uh, it is a very nice sized luxury car. You can get 45 miles to the gallon out on the road. That is tremendous. This is the Audi R8 V10 Plus. Sports car. Very sharp looking car. $200,000 and it's yours. One thing interesting about some of the Acura is they have LED headlights. Now I've seen them as park lights, but this particular model has them as headlights. It's got $43,785 price on it. That is interesting on the Acura having the headlights. Of course, they have the LED tail lights. This is a Toyota Prius. Gets 51 road. I mean, 51 in town and 48 on road. 
Uh, beautiful car. This is a hybrid. This is one of the first hybrids that was made. Was the Prius, and uh, they are. They've turned into a fairly big car. They were small at the beginning, but now uh, you can see this is a very large car. Yeah, yeah, Maserati. Right. Just laying around. Yeah, really good. This is chump change. Buy me one. <laughs> Check the seat cushion. Oh. This is a Ford Fusion hybrid. It's 88 miles to the gallon with electricity and the gas. Uh, very showy car, very big car. Right here, there's your gas fill up, and then over here is your electric fill up. It's sharp, it's beautiful. This is a gas electric. It goes 40 miles on just a charge, and then it can go 300 miles because it has a, uh, has a gasoline engine that pulls a generator and gives you then about a 300 mile range. Uh, this is Cadillac's hybrid, the ELR. And they start out at 72,000, but right now there's all kinds of incentives with Cadillac and you could probably get one for fifty to fifty five thousand. Very sharp looking car. And here's the Fiat. About uh, twenty four thousand up. And they get about forty miles to the gallon. Jeep has a lot of models now. This is the Renegade, and then you've got your regular Jeep inside. There are a lot of different models of Jeeps nowadays. This is the new Dodge Promaster City Wagon. This is new to the Dodge lineup of vehicles. It's a, like a little small, like a minivan, about the size minivans were when they started out. And I can, uh, this was uh, fitted for utility, but they can make them uh, for passenger and they are a five passenger when they have the back seat. This is the Chevy Volt. It's, as this one stands, it's 39,000, and it can get uh, 98 miles to the gallon with uh, electric and fuel both. It is a hybrid model. And the Chevy Volt. This is the new Corvette. Beautiful car. This is a Kia Trailster. It's a sharp looking little car. Or SUV, I should say. And then here's the Kia Soul, the green one. And then here's the Kia Soul all electric. This vehicle is an all electric vehicle. It has about a 95 uh, mile range on the charge. Its equivalency of uh, power to mileage is like 106 miles to the gallon.
This is the Kia K900. It's a very big car. Uh, it's large as a large Mercedes, and it's uh, sixty thousand dollars. you've enjoyed the Atlanta International Auto Show. This is Paul Mullins with Walton Entertainment. Good morning. Thank you for watching. I'm Dina Huff, the Executive Director for the Partnership for Families, Children, and Youth. And today I have with me Miss Lauren Welty. And she is not representing the partnership this morning. She's wearing her other hat and she comes to us from a Child's Voice Advocacy Center. So, Lauren, can you tell us a little bit about the advocacy, the child, a Child's Voice? Sorry, yes. can you tell us a little bit sure. about that organization? Sure. So, a Child's Voice Child Advocacy Center is located in Social Circle, and it's a child advocacy center, which means it serves children who have, for whom allegations of sexual abuse or severe physical abuse have been made. It's a very child-friendly environment where we do forensic interviews and forensic medical examinations, and then we can refer the children and their families for any other services they need. Okay. Um, I know that the partnership hosted um, a training several months back that was a wonderful benefit to our county, and I know that you all offer that throughout the county as well. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that program? Sure. So that training is through an organization called Darkness to Light. It's called the Stewards of Children Training. It's for adults, and it helps them to recognize the signs of child abuse, and it gives them tools for how they can actively prevent it in their communities. It's something we offer all the time. We're hoping to offer a couple more pretty soon, and it's a great course for anyone who works with children. So any organizations, coaches, even just groups of parents or churches are great candidates for that class. It's normally $10 a person. We do have scholarships if, you know, the funding is an issue. Oh, and it's an excellent training. I think so too. And is it just a one series? I mean, is there like a, a second training right. that to so that or so far as I know it's just the one day two hour course so it's pretty quick pretty okay. enjoyable it's a video based curriculum so it's not super boring or anything so like if that. someone who you know an organization who worked with children mm -hmm. wanted to do this for their staff it's only two hours right. out of your day and, and mm -hmm. fairly reasonable so uh, I would recommend it to any organization in the county now I know y'all you all have a lot planned uh, coming up, so tell us a little bit about April, okay. and we're moving into April soon. Yes. So April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, so this is a big month for the Advocacy Center. We will be offering education and training opportunities like the Stewards of Children course. We can also do other informational sessions um, just to talk with children or their families about child safety, body safety things like that. We also have our annual fundraising raffle going on right now that we call Give Child Abuse a Spring Break. It's uh, it's our big fundraiser. This is the fourth year we've done it and we are selling tickets now to start drawing prizes on April 1st. Oh great, great. Yes. Well if someone were interested in all that you have going on yes. or just one component of it, how would they contact you all? They can contact us by phone. Our phone number is 770-464-0082. Or we're on Facebook. Our Facebook is A Child's Voice Child Advocacy Center. All of our information is on there, including contact information. We also have a website, which is achildsvoicecac.com. Maybe .org. I should know that. I think both go to it. Okay. So if someone wants to buy raffle tickets, that's also how they can contact us, or if they know any of the board members who are on the board, which people may not know who they are. But you can call us, 770-464-0082. Tickets are $10 per ticket, or if you buy 10 tickets for $100, you get an extra ticket thrown in for free. We have 17 prizes we're giving away, and we're going to draw one prize a day, Monday through Friday. So we'll be drawing April 1st through April 23rd, so all month we'll be blowing up Facebook with what our prizes are, who won them. Do you have, uh, 
you want to give us a hint on what some of the prizes might be? Sure. Um, we have a whole bunch of different ones. We have a guided quail hunt at Birch Plantation for people who like to hunt. Oh. Um, we have a lot of gift cards to places like Publix, Quick Trip, Rock Room Shoes, um, Redbox. We have 25 free Redbox rentals and a gift card to CVS. We also have World of Coke tickets, a family membership to Zoo Atlanta, um, UGA football tickets. Wow. So that's pretty exciting. There's also Gwinnett Braves, Atlanta Braves. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Oh, that's a, lot. that's a lot. I have a ticket, but I think I need yes. to buy more. I think so. You should. Yeah. Yes. I Still I got will. some. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Anything else you'd like to share? I think that's it. We're excited to be here and we're excited about April. We're going to have a lot going on. We'll also have pinwheel gardens, which are sort of a symbol for the hope that comes for children even when they've been abused. So we'll be doing some pinwheel gardens around town. You can check those out. That helps to bring awareness about child abuse in our community because it is something that happens here. But we're working to help those kids and then prevent any future abuse. Well, there, will you have a message out there as well or is it just yeah, when well, someone sees the pinwheels they'll know? you know what it is we're gonna have some informational signs next to them okay um so yeah i think so we stop might do and some look and, and the, know what they're about yes and then come to us for a training or information okay well yeah. thank you laura thanks dina thanks for being my guest sure and if you have any questions for us here at the partnership always feel free to call us um, if you need to know about a resource if we don't have the answer we will certainly try to find an answer for you you can always call us at 770-207-6060. As always, thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Kenny Sargent with Keep Walton Beautiful in the Walton County Recycling Center and want to thank you all for tuning in today. Um, First off, I wanted to talk a little bit more about our document destruction. We've, we've firmed up the date and I have a little more information than, than I did last time. It will be uh, Saturday, June 6th from 10 to 12. Um, it will be in the Carmichael uh, Drug parking lot again where we have normally had it. And we will uh, be asking that everybody bring in uh, a pair of, of old, uh, slightly worn shoes. We're going to do the shoe box recycling again. Um, we, we had a really good um, turnout and really good participation with, with that program last time and, and we would like to, to get you all to do it again. Um, it will be um, a maximum of two banker boxes um, free of charge and after that um, they're going to price five dollars a box for, for any additional boxes. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, we're, we're getting in a lot of yard waste and limbs, leaves, all of that type of thing um, are coming in here at the center. And I do want to remind you that we do not take that here. None of the yard waste can come here. There's several inert landfills that are, that are very near us. We'd be happy to give you the number to any of those places and names and directions or anything else to help you out as much as possible, but I did want to save you a trip down here because we do not take those. I uh, also wanted to remind you, it seems like a lot of people are doing some, some spring cleaning and painting and uh, spiffying up around the house, and I wanted to remind you that paint is also uh, not allowed here. Liquid paint, that is. If you have a little bit of paint left in the bottom of your bucket, and you can take the top off and give it a weekend to, or so to dry through and through. And as long as it's completely dry, you can bring it in and dispose of it. Uh, but if there's any liquid at all in the can, it, it can't come here. Uh, people do use oil dry or kitty litter to mix in the bucket of paint. Once they mix it in, they use the, the stick or whatever they've mixed it in with to scrape it back out into newspaper. It can then be balled up and, and put in your household trash. Uh, some other people have, have gotten a little more creative over time and they'll, they'll spread out a tarp and pour the paint out onto the tarp and so where it pours out real thin and once it dries they just roll it up and put it in their household trash. That, that is another way of getting rid of that. Um, again if you have any questions on, on 
recycling or disposal options here in the county or any any questions involving that at all feel free to give us a call our, our number here is 770-267-1421 and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, again like always I would like to encourage you guys to come in and see what we have to offer here in the county uh, there's there's a lot of recycling opportunities there's disposable opp disposal opportunities that you may not get elsewhere uh, just come in and check us out we'd be happy to walk you through show you the place and what we do and and how important it is that we continue to do the things we're doing here in Walton County uh, again thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time Hi, this is Jody Johnson. I'm here with the uh, Recreation Report. Uh, this week we have a couple things we want to talk about. Uh, as uh, the spring is finally trying to get here uh, in Walton County, we, uh, we start our spring activities, which means baseball and softball, our soccer and our track activities in the uh, athletic arena are, are starting to, to, to participate. Our opening day was uh, just a week or so ago, so we're kind of in the, uh, the beginning stages of all of those sports. Uh, so good luck to all those teams that are playing and uh, hopefully the weather will, will work out for us. It's either too cold or it seems to be raining uh, two or three days out of the week. So it's been, it's been, a, been tough to get started with those spring programs this year. Um, with that being said, as always, once we start a program, it's time for us to start looking at our next program, which will be our fall sports registration. And again, that's our fall baseball and softball, uh, soccer, um, uh, we have our football and our cheerleading program that goes on that time. So uh, come in, sign up. The uh, sign-ups will be uh, May 11th through the 16th. And we go Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Thursday, we go 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Saturday, 9 to 1. Uh, and that's May 11th through the 16th. So get in and register for your fall sports. A lot of people uh, don't realize that you know, we sign up this early, but you know, we try to sign up before the kids get out of school towards the middle of May uh, is when we sign up for all those fall activities. Uh, also, what we do in the spring, uh, we usually open up our two fishing ponds for everyone to go out and fish. Uh, our fishing and casting contests, uh, we have two each year. Our first one will be at Meridian Park, and that is Saturday, April 25th. Uh, we start at 6 a.m. right at daylight, and it lasts until 1 p.m. We usually have a drawing, uh, and then we have the casting contest, and we give out awards. The second one is here in Monroe at Matthews Park, and that's Saturday, May 2nd, uh, and that is from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, as, as well, we do the casting contest and um, uh, several other activities. Uh, there's also a Frisbee uh, golf contest out at Matthews Park coming up next weekend on the 28th of uh, March. So if you're interested in that, head out to Matthews Park. We do have an 18 hole um, course set up out there at Matthews Park. It's, uh, it's a little tough where you go over the water on a few holes through the woods and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real good aerobic activity for you. Uh, as always, we invite you to come out to the community centers. It's never too late to, to start exercising and, uh, and get in shape here at the uh, Meridian or the Felker Community Centers. So come in and, uh, and, and try out uh, what we have to offer there. Uh, we want to thank the Walton County Health Care Foundation who has provided grant money for all of the uh, uh, exercise equipment that we have available there at uh, Felker and Meridian Parks. So get in and get registered. Remember that's coming up May 11th through the 16th for all our four fall sports activities. And then we have our fishing uh, and casting contest coming up uh, in, at Meridian Park and Matthews Park. As soon as we get through the uh, uh, the uh, fishing derbies, then we open it up for the general public to fish. Um, some of the parks we limit uh, when you can fish and when you can't. Uh, we have fishing activities for the youth as well. Uh, so we invite you to come out uh, and, and get outdoors in Walton County. It's a, it's a beautiful time of the year to, to, to experience uh, all the parks at Walton County. Also go to our website, waltoncountyga.gov. It's got loads of information, all of our programs, all of the costs for our, uh, our uh, fall sports programs and our um, other contests. Fishing program's free for you to come out, so we look forward to seeing uh, a, a good turnout. We average about three to 500 people each year at the fishing derby, so uh, get out and get there early uh, so you can get one of the better spots. Um, so hopefully you can catch a fish. Uh, so until next time, thank you very much.
Hello Walton County, this is Kevin Littlewood, Chairman of Support, Channel 16, Walton Entertainment. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit, start off with, about uh, the jail and the jail concerns in Walton County. I did uh, send a letter to the Tribune uh, last week and they summarized some of it, but I, do, I would like to clarify some of the items that, that was in there. Um, a great deal has changed in criminal justice since our splice was passed back in 2012. At that time, when Sheriff Chapman and I went around the county, our jail was overcrowded. We were housing prisoners out. But uh, since that time, Governor Deal has took office as uh, governor and worked, started working immediately on criminal justice reform. And cr criminal justice reform has, uh, has started to, they, they got these drug courts now, they got these uh, offender courts, and they're, they're beginning to rehabilitate folks and let them out of, out of prison. Um, just uh, last week in the Capitol in Atlanta, Judge Mike Boggs from the Court of Appeals spoke to the commissioners of Georgia and said as, as of that day, Georgia as a whole was 1,500 less prisoners incarcerated than they were the year prior to that. So that was uh, some of the concerns that we've had as a board of commissioners going forward to want to be able to spend your money wisely here in the county that you, you have solely approved. We're not saying that we're not building anything. We just want to go out and, and get the accurate numbers. Uh, if you look around at counties that are adjacent to us, Newton County, for instance, they have a population of 105,000, where Walton County is projected to be at 2020. They have room for uh, 600, 600 people, and they averaged 458 last year. Um, our neighbor to the north right here, uh, Barra County, they got 70,000 population, and they have 391 beds. They averaged 243 last year. Um, Jackson County, is, uh, they, they were 41% capacity in their new jail last year. Walton County, with a population of 84,000, we averaged uh, a little over well, 359 inmates with uh, bed space for 440. All these numbers, according to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs, which every, every jail and every county in the state of Georgia are required to give a monthly total to, these, to the state of Georgia, tell them what they have and what they have incarcerated. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the jail project and, and keeping people incarcerated and making sure that criminals are there is very important to the Board of Commissioners of Walton County and important to the county. But we also, in that splash, passed uh, some very other important issues in that in that uh, splice, which is road road improvements, water and sewer, parks and recreation, the two fire stations, and uh, you know there's a, there's a lot there because we could spend a large amount of money that may be not necessary. So this feasibility study will go out and do evaluations. It'll see what we need, what the trends are, what's there, and, and actually show the Board of Commissioners what the cost will be at going forward if we do decide to do something or if, we, or if it's necessary to do something. And so, uh, you know, this Board of Commissioners has spent your money wisely down through the years and this is just another occasion that we want to make sure that we are true going forward just because of times has changed and uh, the, the need is not as high as it once was, but it is still very important to be able to keep criminals incarcerated if they need to be there, but we just want to make sure we have adequate bed space for our sheriff and the sheriff's department for them to be able to take care of Walton County for the next 10 to 15 years. If you have any questions or concerns, please give me a call, 770-267-1316. Thank you. Welcome to this week's edition of The Health Story. My name is Dee Dee Harris. I'm the Executive Director of Walton Wellness, a nonprofit located here in Walton County dedicated to the prevention of lifestyle related chronic illness. Each week I like to come to you and bring you some kind of new resource or tell you about an activity going on or, or maybe share with you some information that I think might be helpful on your health journey or someone you love. And today I want to talk about, of course we're into the new year and we've talked about New Year's resolutions and we've talked about what we want to start doing, making goals for this year. And so today I want to talk about a program which you may have heard about on another another segment 
um, but it is called Walk Georgia. It is a program that is sponsored by the University of Georgia Extension Service and it's a really neat program to do. It is computer based and what you do is you go online at walkgeorgia.org and you sign up and then as you do your activities whether it's biking, walking, running, gardening, house cleaning, just about any activity that you could do in your life they have um, a way of converting that into miles and so the whole idea behind this program is to actually walk across the state of Georgia virtually on your computer. So whatever activity you do, once you sign up, you go in daily, hopefully, or however often you do your activity, and you log in what you did, how long you did it, and you typically will say whether you did it moderately, strenuously, um, or something like that, and then it will convert, after you answer those questions, it will convert whatever activity you did into miles and then it will put it into your database and it will show you walking across the state of Georgia. So the neat thing about this, this is a great thing for families to do together. It is really neat because as you walk across the state of Georgia, it actually tells you a little bit of history, a little bit of trivia about the different places that you're visiting. So if you go through um, Gwinnett County, it's going to talk to you about some of the history of Gwinnett County and um, some of the trivia and stuff. And it does that all the way across the state, which is very interesting. And it's a great learning tool um, for your children as well. So it's a great thing to do um, as a family, but you can also do it as a larger group. If you wanted to start a group at your church um, with your civic club or work, any of those organizations is a great way to get up a group to do it, sign on, and it is a little bit of a competition because you are able to go online and see what groups are in the lead. So it's a little bit of fun and you can actually compete against one another, um, which adds a little bit of element to it. And um, the good thing about Walk Georgia, though, is in the past, this program has been about an eight-week program. So you would have a certain length of time to sign up, then it would run about eight weeks, and then it would be over. And then it might start up again another time. Well, the good thing is, and I'm so glad that they've actually changed that so that Walk Georgia now is just year-round. You can sign up at any time, you can start at any time, um, and you can finish at any time. So it doesn't have to just be within an eight week period, which I think is great so that anyone at any time can sign up. And that is starting this month, February, they have launched this new Walk Georgia website and uh, there's a lot of great resources and tools on it. So I encourage you, check out Walk Georgia. You can do it as an individual, you can do it as a family or as a group and look at all the great tools and sign up. Like I said, you don't have to go to the gym, you don't have to walk or run, it's any kind of activity that you do. So like I said, they even have house cleaning on there. So vacuuming counts. Um, so it's just a neat thing to do. As always, I encourage you to check out our website, waltonwellness.org. There's lots of great resources there too as well. Um, our contact information is there so you can email me with your questions or if you want more information about Walk Georgia. Um, as I said before, Walk Georgia is sponsored by the University of Georgia Extension Service. So um, if you want more information specifically about that program, I encourage you to call them um, also, if you want to get me the old-fashioned way, you can always get me by phone at 770-313-8107. Thanks for watching. Hi there, I'm Emily Russell coming to you from Clearview Regional Medical Center. Thank you so much for tuning in to join us. As always, we have something exciting going on at Clearview and um, we're just proud to be serving the community. In recent events, we've had our medical office building open and we've had several of our offices relocate. Our physical therapy office, our pain and spine center, our ear, nose and throat doctor, Dr. Miller, along with our surgical specialists who are Dr. Norman and Dr. Banach can all be found in our new medical office 
office building here at Clearview. And if you need any of their contact information, feel free to visit our website at clearviewregionalmedicalcenter.com to get all of their updated information. Um, along with them, we have some other very exciting tenants that are going to be joining us. Athens Orthopedic Clinic has taken up residence in our new medical office building along with University Cancer and Blood Center, Dr. Spleichel and Dr. Wong. Um, along with them, Gwinnett Heart Specialist also join us and Clearview Wound Healing Center will be joining us as well. So we're just excited to have new developments going on on our campus and to be able to better serve our community and, and just the people in the community and our patients. So if you haven't come out to check out our new medical office building, please do that and stay tuned for an upcoming ribbon cutting and open house as well. So, back to regular business as usual. I'm excited to have with me a guest today, um, Mr. Matt Colberson. And Matt is a senior at the University of Georgia. And Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about the program that you're studying? Well, basically I'm studying um, health promotion, which is the study of the field, just public health in general, and how we can better ourselves and better our quality of life in how we live each day. And the practices of getting out, being active, and changing our diet, and how we can actually become healthier. Excellent, very good, which is always an important topic with everybody, whether it's weight loss or general health or diabetes management, whatever it might be, health is so important. Um, so we're excited to have Matt working with us here at the hospital this semester. We always love having students and getting to help shape the lives of young healthcare professionals. Um, so today, Matt, we're gonna talk a little bit about the month of March, which is what? Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a topic that a lot of people want to talk about regularly, it's not necessarily a dinner table conversation per se, but it's an important one, would you not say? I would definitely say it's important. It's something you need to be wary of and you know, when you get a little bit later on in life, if you're over your 50s, um, in your 50s or older, then you need to be wary about this and wary about um, the polyps that may develop on you know, in your on the colon. colon. On exactly, your colon. exactly. Um, do you know any statistics about percentages of people that experience colorectal cancer or anything along those lines? Yeah, it's about um, when you hit 50, when you hit the age of 50, you need to start um, getting screened and getting tests, getting your colonoscopy every 10 years. You need to go out and get that done because we've got um, men are three times more likely than women to actually have colorectal cancer. So men, definitely get out there and get your colonoscopies done. Yeah, that's, you know, and colonoscopies, it's, it's again, not necessarily a pleasant thing that you want to do, um, but it is one of those necessary evils, and you're exactly right, Matt. By the, by the age of 50, you need to be starting to think about that first screening colonoscopy, and every 10 years is a really great guide to go off of. Um, men especially, and especially African-American men as well, um, perhaps sometimes it's more prevalent in that population. So that's something important to consider and something important to keep in mind. Um, so the best what is the best screening tool for colorectal cancer well the best screening tool would be to use a colonoscopy that exactly. would be the best one to use get it done every 10 years at the latest you know if you can get it done a little bit sooner than that I mean that's better obviously but every 10 years is the uh, recommendation get that done and that way you know you're good to go very good, yeah. Prevention is really the key with that, and early detection is the key. Um, and the best screening tool for colorectal cancer is a colonoscopy. Um, we have a lot of physicians here at Clear that do, do screening colonoscopies as well as diagnostic colonoscopies. Um, if you've been having certain symptoms that you think might be um, transparent to the fact that you might be having some issues, some polyps, some lesions, things like that, um, that's the perfect time to get a screening colonoscopy or a diagnostic colonoscopy, rather. Um, we do those here at the hospital and we also do them in our outpatient endoscopy center in Loganville. Um, Dr. Ellison is the one that practices there and um, a little unknown fact or known fact about Dr. Ellison is that his adenoma detection rates are in the 90th percentile for all um, GI docs and those that perform colonoscopies. So, so he's very, very good at finding um, adenomas and polyps. And adenomas are generally your cancerous polyps, correct? Correct. Now, not every polyp is going to be cancerous. Not every polyp is cancerous. So don't just be afraid when you get in there and get a colonoscopy done and they say you do, that you do in fact have polyps. You know, they'll actually run some tests on those and then they'll come back later and let you know how cancerous they actually are and then the steps from there will be taken accordingly. 
Perfect, yeah, that is great advice. Now, are there any other precautionary things that people can do, diet, exercise, is definitely. obesity a factor, anything like that? Obesity is definitely a factor. We wanna, we wanna just as it is with all type of chronic conditions or any type of cancerous conditions, we wanna get out there, limit our carcinogen intake, so alcohol, smoking, you know, limit mm -hmm. that to, well, zero preferably. But um, things like changing your diet and having more fruits and vegetables, we want to do that. Those have um, antioxidants in it, that, which will help you to in preventing cancerous um, agents. And also, you want to have less red meat in your diet. So mm, things like that, good. you know, get out good and advice. exercise as well. You know, keep your body healthy. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. You know, anything you can do to take that extra step for health prevention is the way to go. Um, and that's the really cool part about your your position mm -hmm. here and the field that you're studying, being health promotions. It's all about making healthy choices in the beginning so that it doesn't lead to long-term consequences. That's so, correct. Very good. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to hear a little bit about um, colorectal cancer month as well as what's going on here at the hospital. Um, so if you have any questions or if you would like to talk more about this, or perhaps you would like a recommendation on a physician get a, getting a referral for a physician to actually perform that colonoscopy, you can always call our physician referral line, and that number is 1-877-933-2762, um, and we'll kind of match a physician up with your insurance preferences and get you taken care of, especially if you're that age 50 or older and you've never had a colonoscopy. Definitely, that is something to consider. Talk to your primary care physician about that. Um, or give us a call and we'll be happy to steer you in the right direction. So as always, if there's anything we can do to help you to better serve you or your family, please let us know. Um, feel free to reach out to us by email or by phone. And you can always visit our website at clearviewregionalmedicalcenter.com. Thanks so much and be healthy. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, and as always, we're going to show you some of the dogs and cats that are available here at Walton County Animal Control. Uh, it's springtime, uh, and so unfortunately, that means we're going to start getting a lot of these in. Uh, we need, that means two things. We need you, if you're a pet owner, uh, to have your dog spayed or neutered. You know, we end up getting in so many cute puppies, yeah, you can say, how in the world can these be unwanted? But we'll get so many in throughout the spring and summer that it really is hard to find homes for them quick enough. We don't need any more litters of puppies, so do what's right with your animal, have it spayed or neutered. There's a lot of vets in town uh, that offer discounted prices. There's a low-cost clinic, Paradox Spay Neuter Clinic that you could take your animal to. You know, there's no need for these cute little guys to have to come into the shelter and then us scramble to find new homes. Meanwhile, more come in uh, and then some of them face the, the risk of being put to sleep. So just do what's right and have your animal spayed or neutered. Uh, but also with puppy and kitten season, that means we're gonna have a lot of these in the shelter. So maybe you're uh, looking to add a, a dog or a cat to your home. Maybe you want a, a play friend for your kids this summer. Just come down to the shelter. Every Every day uh, throughout the spring and summer we get kittens, puppies, adult dogs, uh, we get mixed breeds like these, we get purebred dogs, we get beautiful cats, all different kinds of animals. It's not just you know sick and ugly mutts at the pound. We get a lot of really great looking animals. Uh, we provide heartworm testing, vaccinating, deworming, discounts from veterinarians, uh, adoption kits, all kinds of things that go for just a $40 adoption fee. So remember, get your pet spayed and neutered, or if you're looking to add one to your house, don't forget your local animal control shelter. Uh, you can always see what we have at waltonpets.net or come to the shelter in the afternoons from 2 to 4.45, Monday through Friday, and come see what adorable pups we have. And now we'll show you some of the other ones that are available. All right, what we have here is about a two-year-old male. He's a terrier mix. Um, he is not neutered. Very sweet dog, loves other animals. Um, where he picked him up from, he got along with the kids, a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, so if you're in a, dog, in a position to get a new dog, here you go. All right, here we have um, a Border Collie mix. She's a female, a couple years, about two years old. She's really sweet, needs a good home. All right, we have here is a, she's a boxer mix. She's about three years old. Um, we believe she's already spayed. Um, she does not get along with cats. Um, she'd be good, you know, she seems to be good with people, um, but not cats. Um, she needs a good home, so don't forget about her. Here we have a 
a boxer mix. His name is Duncan. He's about a year old. He's a male, not neutered. Um, he has been vaccinated. He's heartworm negative. And he needs to be the only dog in the house. He does not get along with other dogs. But he's very sweet, as you can see. All right. We have here is a female. No, she's a pit bull mix. Um, she's about three years old. She's very, very sweet, very loving. Um, she would need to be spayed. Um, she needs a good home. Lots of with lots of energy. <laughs> Where do you come alive? A stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org, a free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia County, all in one easy to use site. When you move more, you live more. WalkGeorgia.org Good morning, I'm Keith Glass, City of Monroe Police uh, Department, and I got Lieutenant Tracy Hanson with me today. And what we want to do is point out a, a problem that's uh, not only uh, citywide, but it's probably a nationwide, statewide, and countywide problem, and that's just litter. And while this is not the most devastating uh, crime that uh, we deal with in the city of Monroe, as you can see from the video, it's, it's a lot of trash. And, and we're standing right here at the uh, East Spring Street exit uh, coming off 78 Highway. And this litter was picked up uh, about 10 or 12 days ago. And what I want to exp express to you is, is this is your community. If you see somebody littering, uh, go ahead and call the uh, 911, give them a tag number, uh, and officers inside the city will res respond to that. Uh, if you can't uh, call 911 for some reason, uh, if you can take down a tag number, Lieutenant Tracy Hanson is going to kind of be heading up something for me on this litter for a while, and I'd ask that you just email her the uh, tag number. Her email is thanson at MonroeGA.gov. That's T. Hanson at MonroeGA.gov. And again, it's your community, and you, as you can see, uh, and he'll scan around and show you some more trash, but uh, this trash was picked up with uh, uh, community service by community service workers about 12 days ago. And you can see how much is built up. So we really need your assistance, and uh, we're looking at some ways also of uh, uh, places where we have a lot of this, maybe getting some uh, uh, video uh, out there so we can catch them also on video. But we just need your help with that. And if you have any other problems with the uh, crime or whatever in the city of Monroe that uh, we can help you with, please contact us at the city of Monroe Police Department. And I just we'll look forward to hearing from, from citizens here in the community and we can work together and hopefully make Monroe not only a safer place, but more appealing to the eye and just like chief said just email me with any problems um, if you see anyone littering or if you can get a tag number and we can follow up with those people just email me t hansen at monroega.gov we thank you for your help you've known for years that this is the number one cause of lung cancer smoking that's why the surgeon general issued this warning But do you know the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers? It's in this room. You can't see it or smell it. It's radon. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. It can build up to dangerous levels without notice. Now the Surgeon General has issued another lung cancer warning. And whether you smoke or not, Breathing radon can cause lung cancer. That's why you need to have your home tested. Protect your family. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Heed the warning. Have your home tested, because radon problems can be fixed. 
Preserve your family's video history for the generations to come. Creative Artists, 1113 West Spring Street, Monroe, 770-267-7368.